ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the European Conference on Future Skills for Europe's Aerospace and Defense Industry. Rzeszów is a center of aerospace industry in Poland. Defense industry is also an important part of local business activity. Moreover, many global corporations of aerospace industry as well as defense industry are also located in the region. The European Commission received the mandate to support strategic cooperation between key stakeholders. Therefore, to put in place framework conditions for cooperation. We decide, ASD and the industry, to involve the universities, vocational training, regional clusters, schools, universities, uh, to, in, inside this pact of skills. At least, you know, this is a big challenge to put all the people on the same page to teach them about what is the Pact for Skills, to uh, educate them about what do we want to do, to try to connect uh, uh, our forces, our, our, our network, uh, and to be uh, even clever, even smarter, all together. This is, this is the way acting together and for the industry. Aeronautic is really a, a European topic for all the regions in Europe, a beautiful one. So we need to, to work together. We are in times where a lot of uh, a lot of budget has been allocating to programs and instruments that are supporting skills. To me, it's obvious that the membership in the European Union is uh, one of the best thing which happened to my country last 200 years. Very soon, aerospace in Poland will feel it, but also aerospace in other countries will feel it, that all products, not green product, will be replaced by green product. We are talking about revolutionary engine concepts, and here the skill set will slightly, and in some cases even dramatically, change. Because first of all, we are starting with water-enhanced uh, turbofan concept, uh, in which we are going uh, into the reduction of CO2, NOx uh, and contrails. So we are more focusing on uh, being more green, being more attractive. Future-oriented company should think always about next step, about the future. What in next two, three, five years we will need for our business to have a success. Technology is more and more advanced. Pressure from the job is also bigger and bigger. Many things are changing. We need to be flexible, open-minded and all, all this stuff. It means that we should concentrate really on problems. And coordinator of uh, Asset Plus project. Asset Plus uh, is uh, an Erasmus Plus project. <music> We would like to start with the creation of the defense training network that is fundamental for uh, building the critical mass and to capture the detailed needs in terms of job profiles and skills. Technological roadmaps are the best approach in order to have an actual impact on uh, educational system and uh, on, uh, on industry. We are very much willing to engage young people in our activities to build, to contribute to building the interests of young people in technologies which are that important for the defense industry. The European Defense Challenge is an open competition in which a broad question related to defense technologies is proposed to students from all over Europe. Here, question is remote everything. To what extent can unmanned assets interact with humans in the field of defense operations? The, the question is very broad. So we 
uh, want uh, the students not only to show uh, or, or to develop their uh, technical skills, but also it, the question uh, uh, has room uh, for the students to think about the uh, political, the regulatory uh, aspects, the economical, social, even ethical, uh, and uh, this is uh, a good exercise for them uh, just to think uh, not only in the technology, but also in the impact of technology in the society. It's difficult from time to time to attract new talent, young people, um, and women as well, you know, to, to the field of aeronautic and defense. And this is the reason why uh, we, we decided together with some partners to, to, to launch the second edition of the, of the Asset Plus Challenge. Cadets who are graduated as um, second lieutenants, uh, master of science, and uh, go directly to military units or uh, another military institution, including uh, science research center. After 20, 30 years of, of, of duty, they also can be uh, employees of uh, military defense industry and a lot of such retired officers but still young uh, are working for for example pgz i think that it's a reception for for the success the cooperation the universities and industry so all the time we should uh, work together we are looking for people who are with passion who are joining us uh, not only to gain experience, but who are joining us because they feel um, they want to do something important. It's always good uh, to mix the students and the professional. We are working closely with the industrial to better understand uh, which kind of technology uh, they are working on it and to implement uh, them uh, within our hangar, uh, within our courseware or within our program because we want our, our students to uh, be able to be aware of this new technology uh, we will be used in the future. Only the cooperation of scientists with a broadly understood business brings positive results. It's, uh, Interpreters the necessary to lead it to project focusing on solving current and real and no theoretical problem. The challenge for the, keys, the skills providers this is to create uh, as many opportunities as possible uh, so that there may be some um, collaboration not only from the educational point of view, the pedagogical point of view, but also from research point of view, so that also the students can take advantage of this. Technology race is going so fast that, that you cannot use current or, or, or state-of-the-art um, defense acquisition procedures as, uh, as well. Yeah. For example, in the, in the realm of counter UAV, defense typically takes a few years to acquire something. But in, the, in the realm of counter UAV, uh, five-year-old technology, that, that's prehistoric. We also have a challenge because our company every year changing in many areas, so it's the difficult how to follow for the, uh, according to these changes with our engineers. There is a continuous changing of the environment for the engineer. Uh, there is a new tools, uh, new idea. If they stop to learn, uh, they will not be able to make his work uh, further or better. I don't afraid about the young people and their digital skills. I can even say that when they are born, they have all kinds of electronic devices in their hands. Let's imagine that uh, we will have uh, some kind of global failure of all electronic navigations, all system breakdown. How will we react? How will we find ourselves in such a situation? How to not only to trust the systems, but how also to use our brain to, to, to catch this, to, to look on the surroundings which is around us and then how to, to manage this information. This is a very, very important thing. 
uh, we know that we have a demographic problem. We know that we, as well we will lose millions of jobs, but we will create as well millions of jobs. The thing is that millions of jobs that we will lose, they already exist. The millions of jobs that we will create, we still don't have the competences. The scope of activity uh, has grown tremendously over the years and it applies not only to the company I'm, I have a honor to represent, but it also applies to many companies in, in the area. It is a given that the skills needed in industry are evolving very quickly today and therefore it is a very, uh, it's very important that the VET be close to the industry uh, to develop programs and new trainings as fast as possible. To this regard, agility is the key. When we are teaching and when we are developing the skills in these young people, we need to do this in such a way that we motivate them to understand that there is more behind it, there's more to it than just learning the basics, but the basics is the foundation that we can build the rest on. Now more and more often we see a need to implement soft skills training and such trainings are provided both for specialists uh, as well for managers. Those hard skills are essential in, in defense industry. And however, uh, those hard skills, uh, you know, are, as I said, need to be upgraded. You, you need to have people that that um, want to learn new things, that are uh, ready and that are capable of um, um, uh, of understanding how those new technologies will influence the world in the new future and can anticipate uh, how those new technologies could be used. And the future requires us to think about proper combination of technical skills and soft skills. Yes. You know, that to teach soft and digital skills, we have to make some kind of innovations to transfer this kind of skills to our future or current students and future professionals. The key issue is to link upskill and reskilling policies to business and uh, technological strategy. Team of the future will be the mix of human and artificial intelligence. It is very important and I think that we will have to take under consideration planning our activities in the perspective of, of many years. We are in times of fertile soils for building skills. Important work is done in the last 20 years and today in particular. Important initiatives are in place. Uh, the amount of available programs and funding for skills has never been so significant. So let's use this potential in full.